Hi, I'm Chrissy Miles, and you're watching The Chrissy Miles Show, where I teach you how to take eternal truth and produce extreme results. In today's episode, I'm so happy to introduce to you my very good friend, Mary Hudson. Now, you might not know Mary, but chances are you've heard of her daughter, Katy Perry, and she'll be sharing on The Chrissy Miles Show today the introduction of her brand new grandbaby, Daisy Bloom. She'll talk about her relationship with her grandchildren, how they've stayed close during this difficult time of the pandemic. And also Mary's going to share a little bit about what she does, what her life is like, what her career is like. And she does a lot of amazing things in helping women uh, to really get more out of life, to arise up to the different challenges that people face and how to overcome those things. She she talks a lot about her own personal life experiences, and I think you're going to find the interview really entertaining, and you're going to also get a lot of good things to take away, practical tips to help you get the best out of life. So watch this video, comment in the comment section if you'd like more videos like this, and welcome to my friend, Mary Hudson. Today, I want to introduce you to a very special guest who really knows the most about getting more out of life, and that is my good friend, Mary Hudson. Mary, welcome to the Chrissy Miles Show. Well, uh, thank you, Chrissy. That's awesome. I know you get the most out of life by giving life away. That's right. Yeah. When we give life to others, you get the most out of life. So I wanted to just start and uh, maybe introduce our audience to you a little bit. So uh, tell us a little bit about um, about yourself, uh, what you do, how did we get to know each other? <laughs> well, um, let's see, I think we met at a Tim Story meeting, didn't we? Uh, yes. The uh, Hollywood Bible study. Yes, that's and, right. Uh, you guys are just such eager beavers and you are workers in the kingdom of God and you have your TV shows and uh, Lucas has his interviews, which are so cool with, and you know, I used to do a lot of that. I was ABC CBS reporter in Las Vegas for several years and uh, still like to do uh, investigative reporting on uh, <laughs> the Bible and get down uh, deep and get into things. But uh, yeah. Now, my husband, Keith, and I have been married for 40 years. We have three wonderful children, Angela, Katie, and David. And, of course, you probably have heard of the middle child, Katie Perry Hudson. That's my middle name. <laughs> and she, you know, I always say the middle child, does anybody out there have middle children? They always want the most attention. Yeah, and I think your middle oh. child just had your fourth grandbaby added to the bunch. Is that right? Yes, Daisy Dove. She's a precious little thing, and um, we're so excited about her. Yeah, I'm sure you're having a lot of fun now. By the way, tell us a little bit about, you know, what has the transition into grandparenthood been like for you? What What is that all, what's that like? Well, I, I often wondered what people used to say, listen, we could have, uh, we could have just, you know, forgotten about the children and gone straight to the grandchildren. Because <laughs> they were so so awesome you can love them and leave them you know all the dirty diapers that can go to the parents but boy you can just form a relationship with these grandchildren it's like amazing it's mm -hmm. just you and the grandchildren have some sort of special bond yeah and, uh, don't let the enemy talk you out of it just get in there whenever you can whether it's babysitting Mm -hmm. uh, going to the beach, riding bikes, whatever you can do with them, do it. Well, tell us more about what you just said there, because I think that's an interesting concept. You said, you know, don't let the, the devil talk you out of your relationship with your grandparents. Tell me why that would happen or, or what, what kind of goes on where people might think like, gosh, I don't know if I can step in here. Well, a lot of times uh, people live far away from their grandchildren. They think, well, we can't communicate, but you know, we have Zoom, we have FaceTime. We have all kinds of ways of communicating, even the, you know, snail mail, those little children, when I send them little postcards and snail mail, they love it. Yeah. They're, they're being recognized. It's like they're being, you know, their name is being called out and they uh, start to realize, you know, somebody loves me. And then you can start telling them, listen, God loves you. Jesus loves you. He's okay. right there for you. And you're chosen. You're anointed. You're appointed. And you start uh, calling out their gifts and things like that. Hmm. So what are the age ranges of your grandchildren now? Let's see. One month, uh, one year, four years, and six years. 
and then uh, Flynn is uh, Orlando's son and he's nine years and I have a relationship with him too. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about, you know, you know, were there any kind of tough times with your children uh, in, in kind of transitioning into grandparenthood? Did you have to fight the urge to sometimes uh, say something or not say something? How does that work? <laughs> you have to fight that urge all the time. <laughs> they may not receive it, but you know, that's why it's so important to be praying in the spirit, praying in tongues. And listen to the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit will prompt you right at the right time. It's like tuning up your guitar. You have to have the guitar tuned before you can go on there and do a full concert. Otherwise, you're going to be off key, and it's just not going to be received. Your, your concert's going to flop. But when you're in tune with the Holy Spirit, and when things are flowing, changes the whole atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Is there, are there times where you're kind of feeling and sensing things that, you know, gosh, I would love to, you know, give my grandchild like this word right now. I'm really feeling for them. Mm -hmm. and, and do you try to call them up on the, on the FaceTime or how do you do that? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes. And then, I mean, there's other times when I get to babysit and if I, I can't, you know, outright use the name of Jesus in a couple of them, I can go in there and I can do story time at bedtime and I can do stories about angels or stories about uh, God being a good God and there's a good and there's evil because, mm -hmm. you know, they see a lot of these crazy cartoons and things and they're so evil and so menacing, but they need to know that God is bigger than all that. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, doing little fun things like plays and dramas and things like that in front of them, they, they receive and they love it. Yeah. And then yeah. Uh, they start doing it themselves. Mm -hmm. So really just trying to be creative with how you share the love of God. Yeah, you've got to be creative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially uh, considering the situation you're in, you've got to be creative. Yeah. Talk a little bit about, um, you know, how the social distancing and the whole COVID thing has affected your guys' family and, and how have you kind of worked your way through that the last six months? Well, prayer and fasting is always good. <laughs> I went to a uh, prayer meeting down the main street of Santa Barbara and I was just so excited about it because it, we prayed down the main street mm -hmm. and I sent pictures of it to um, my children and they said, oh, mother, look, they're not wearing masks. And I said, well, we can't, we're praying. We can't wear masks. We're waving flags. So I was immediately banned from uh, seeing my children and my grandchildren for 14 days, but that only lasted a week. So wow, yeah, you have to be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove sometimes. Yeah, that's, that's good. So then during these times, you guys have to do your social distancing and, and all of this stuff. Talk a little bit about maybe what's happening in California. I know that there, you guys are, are you still on lockdown or what's that, what's going on? Well, there? We're not on lockdown, but we would like to lock down governor Gavin Newsom, but yeah. We're not on lockdown anymore, but he's got all the schools locked down in Los Angeles and children, you know, it's terrible because there's just a much higher rate of depression and the children are, are, are committing suicide. They can't get, they can't get out. Um, it's, uh, it's really bad. And, uh, you know, we just have to pray our way through this. We have to declare the victory. I mean, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. Mm. We've got to get forceful in our prayers. We have all power over all power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. But that means we can't just sit there passively and be an, you know, a spectator in a stadium. We have to get out there and start praying. I mean, Jewish people, the Jews used to pray always walking around and, and declaring and decreeing. We have some wonderful Jewish neighbors. Actually, they're from, they're called, their last name is Israel. They're from the oh. original tribe of Israel. They're two wow. doors down. And when we walk our dogs every day, we walk by their house and they're always talking and, and declaring. And, awesome. you know, you can hear them. They're very vocal. We have to get vocal with the enemy. We have to get vocal against the things that are trying to affect us in life. We can't yeah. just sit there and be passive. Yeah. Because, um, you know, you do have the power, you'd have it, but it's just like, I always say, you know, you, you, uh, um, your life is decided by that thing two inches below your nose called your mouth. And as you decree and you declare a thing, uh, it shall be done for you. Mm -hmm. uh, Hank Kuhneman's wife, Brenda Kuhneman just wrote a great book. I know I should be advertising my books, but I like this book. It's, uh, the Daily Decree 
by Brenda Kuhneman and how okay. you decree and declare a thing daily. Mm -hmm. And you confess, then you release your blessings and decrees back by scripture that you can confess boldly. Nice. You know, things do occur because angels hearken on the word of God and they can't move their wings or tied behind their backs until they hear the word of God. Then they go to work for you. But you've got to decree it. You've got to declare it. You're a speaking spirit. Yeah. And you are a spirit, you live in a body, you have a soul, but your spirit is uh, just like you decided to become born again. Uh, your spirit makes the decision where you're going to go for eternity. Mm -hmm. So, you know, try it. Start start moving in that direction. Start decreeing. As you read your Bible in the morning, you start seeing scriptures jump out at you. Start speaking those out with your name in it. Start mm -hmm. talking about those things. I was like... Um, uh, Keith, my husband was just got a revelation on us at Romans four seventeen that uh, we call those things that be not as though they were until they show up. He said, "I want to see that in all kinds of different translations." That's just revealing. It's like peeling the banana. It's like just revealing the fruit to me. I want to see what is this all about. I I can call those things that be not as though they were until they show up. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. You just got to do it. As you do it, it's going to come to pass for you. It's yeah, so I, I just did a, um, I just recorded for my next month's episodes of, of our YouTube channel here on the Chrissy Miles show. And one of the things that I taught about was Hebrews chapter three and how really an unbelieving heart is what prevents us from moving into the promises of God. Right, you know, right, 40 right. years, those Israelites grumbled and complained and murmured against their leaders and murmured against God. And they wished to go back into slavery and it says that they vexed the Holy One of Israel. I mean, he had to put up with them for so long when all along he was telling them, you know, this is my promise for you. And if you would just get on board with my promise and trust that what I say is true, I will get you to the promised land. But unfortunately, they were delayed by 40 years. I mean, who wants to be delayed in receiving the promises of God by 40 years? Not me. I want to get in that promised land and start receiving that's right. Well, that's just, it takes a, a couple of leaders like Joshua and Caleb and other people to speak out and say, listen, we can do this. Yes. We can overcome. We don't, I mean, that's true. There's giants in the land and there's giants in the United States of America. They're big, gnarly looking giants, but it didn't stop David with his five smooth stones going against that giant and finding that one weak spot in him and going after him. So you just got to go after him with what you've got, with your five smooth stones and, and find that weak spot. I mean, yeah, and I love I, I love that story too because and I just recently was reviewing that story as well for a blog post that I did. And when you look at that story, what's interesting about it is that Goliath said, Hey, are you gonna come at me with sticks? And I think that that was really a clear indication that that David was tuned in to the voice of God and he heard what that giant said. That the giant anticipated that he was gonna come at him with his shepherd's staff, and he switched gears on a dime. He heard the word of the Lord and he said, Nope. We're going in a different direction. He instantly took action on what God spoke to him in his heart. I love that different direction. But you know what? That giant was only looking at the surface. Mm -hmm. He wasn't seeing what was in because, you know, the enemy can't see what's going on inside of us. He's going, he can see what's going on outside of us, but he can't see how God, you know, Jude 20, you building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. You're strong on the inside. You're going after it with prayer. You're going after yeah. it with your declarations. You're not backing down. You're standing. You're taking ground with every moment. And that's, that's David said, I know I come against you with, with the name of the Lord of hosts. That's right. <laughs> you uncircumcised Philistine. <laughs> you don't even have a covenant, you dirty a giant. You don't even have a you know contract with God, and I've got a covenant with the Most High God, and you're kind to come against me. Give me a First Baptist break. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about you know you 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 have that you have a book called Smart Bombs. What would you say it would be some of the the big breakthroughs that you think you've had in your life by by doing what you're saying right now and speaking the Word of God over your life? Well, I, uh, it, it's kind of interesting because a friend of ours is Pastor Vicki Sharon in the Word of uh, Life Christian Center in Las Vegas, and she was hit by a car and had a stroke in July. It was a terrible accident. Mm -hmm. And um, a scripture that I had always, and it affected her eye, and she wrote and texted me about it. She said, what was that scripture you used? Because I was cross-eyed from the age of uh, three into the age of 15, 
and I had three eye operations and the doctors and the natural took care of it. It was a weak eye muscle. You know, you look like you're paraplegic when you've got a cross eye, but you're not, it's just a weak eye muscle. And so lo and behold, 15 to the age of 39, and I've got three children. I'm traveling around as a traveling minister with three children and my husband. And the muscle in the eye gets weak again, and I start, uh, it starts turning in. I'm going, oh, Lord, Jesus, we're laying hands on people, and it looks like I need hands laid on me. Mm. But um, God quickened the scripture to me from this Messianic Jewish evangelist, Ira Kelman. He said, listen, Mary, you need to take this scripture, Proverbs 20, 12. It says, the hearing ear and the seeing eye, God, has made even both of them. And I mean, I needed my eyes to be even, not look like I was, you know, off base here. And um, so I started speaking that scripture over my eye and nothing happened. <laughs> and after three months, nothing happened. After six months, nothing happened. After a year, and I'm still speaking it, but I mean, you know, your heart gets a little discouraged, but you know what? That word is quick and alive and full of power. So you just got to keep on keeping on, just like you keep on keeping on learning a language, learning how to play uh, tennis or pickleball, whatever you got to do, you got to keep it up. Mm -hmm. So I kept it up. I remember going to a conference with, uh, in Palm Springs with Norval Hayes. Do you remember Norval Hayes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mighty man of God. And uh, I saw him in going down the stairs, uh, and I said, Brother Norval, I have been confessing Proverbs 20:12 for the last year and a half, and my eye is still crossed. And he just looked at me sweetly, and he said, Keep it up, Mary. And I'm going like, Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, brother, give me something else. But you know what? After that, about a month after that, Keith and I and all three of our children went to Monterey, Mexico to do a crusade. And as we went there, uh, God gave me a scripture. We were up on stage and we were about to minister. And God said to tell the people that there is a woman here with a withered, or there's somebody here with a withered hand, because the man with the withered hand in, in uh, uh, you know, how Jesus healed the man with the withered hand. And as his hand was withered, all of a sudden it went out. Mm -hmm. And so I announced that scripture and a woman came running up to the front and she said, my arm is healed. My arm is healed. My arm went out. I've been born like this and it's never gone. It was withered. It never came out before. But today, as you spoke that word, my arm went out and I was totally healed. That's oh awesome. my gosh, the people went into an uproar. That was the first night of the crusade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like God, God just opened the whole thing. It was awesome. Wow. And by the end of the or crusade, the last couple of days, a doctor, it was an ophthalmologist, came up to us in uh, Mexico there, Monterey, and offered us free uh, glasses and contacts. I don't know why we looked like we needed them because we weren't <laughs> wearing them at those times, 1992. But he did. And um, I didn't want to put contacts in my eyes. He gave me an exam and everything like that and got the contact. And Keith, who's very bold and brave, my husband, said, just put it in your eye. And I'm going, oh, I don't want to put a piece of plastic in my eye. But I did. And by the time I got home back to Scottsdale, Arizona, where we were a staff evangelist for the um, Pastor Mike Maiden's church there, um, our friend, the dentist, looked at us on the Sunday morning, and, you know, he's very perceptive. He's a dentist. He said, Mary, your eyes are totally healed. Mm. Your eyes are straight. Now, that was 1992, almost, uh, what is that, almost 30 years ago, and my eyes are totally straight. That's awesome. You would know that a, a contact lens would heal a crossed eye. That's right. Right. Well, and it, again, like sometimes, you know, people would look at that and they say, oh, well, that, that wasn't healing from God. But when God gives you any kind of supernatural word of knowledge or word of wisdom, uh, someone feels moved in their heart to right. assist you in that way. Like that's all the working of God. Exactly. All of it. Exactly right. Yeah. So you can't, you can't put anything down. God will use, he'll use a donkey to tell you you're silly. You're an idiot. <laughs> 
That's right. So uh, tell a little bit about, you know, um, you've been operating in what, you know, we would refer to as, you know, prophetic ministry for a really long time for people who don't really know what that is, or it's kind of confusing to them. Like, how would you explain it? And then tell me a little bit about how, how you grew in that. Cause it's probably not something that you just all of a sudden like, Oh, I'm doing this, but you, maybe you grew in it. How did that happen? Well, it was actually, Chrissy, on our honeymoon, we went to, this was our second marriage. I'd been married before, and so had Keith. And um, we were on our honeymoon. We decided we were going to do it right, and we went to a marriage conference with Buddy and Pat Harrison. Pat Harrison with Kenneth E. Hagen's daughter, and Buddy Harris was her husband. And we went to beautiful downtown Bakersfield. You can imagine how romantic that was. <laughs> <laughs> and, but the thing was that they uh, ministered back and forth in tongues and interpretations. And, you know, you could read about that, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14, which is, I advise you to do because the word will quicken you on that. Mm -hmm. And um, as I, after one of the sessions, we came home, and as I was uh, – Waking up in the morning, the Lord just ministered to me that uh, we would be ministering in tongues and interpretations. That would be our gift. We would minister in tongues and interpretations for the rest of our life. We've been married about three days. We've been married now 40 years. And um, I was very shy because uh, I had this crossed eye. Mm -hmm. And to me, it was, you know, scary to even open my mouth. So... <laughs> Uh, praise you, God. You were shy. Oh my goodness. I was so shy. I had to think about something I said 30 seconds before I said it, but then when I got filled with the spirit and started speaking in tongues, it was my spirit that started speaking. So I, I got really bold Yeah. or bolder and bolder. As you say, it was a development. Mm -hmm. And, um, after that I would go home and, uh, you know, we would start, uh, ministering in tongues and interpretations and uh it grew and it grew and it grew until a lot of times you know i can see things in advance i can see what's going to happen and um you know it's important that i pray and lay groundwork in prayer before i go forth to a meeting or do something because you're going to be a lot more accurate you're going to be able to see clearer so i remember uh when we were in malaysia and we had that whole group of people start lining up for us to pray for them. And, you know, I was kind of standing there like, I don't know what you want me to pray for you about. Like, I don't have anything for you. But then all of a sudden, like, I just started seeing things for people. And I thought, well, I'm just going to minister this to them, you know, and, and try to encourage them in it. And I feel like that was just a, a move of the Holy Spirit really in my life, showing me that, you know, even though you may not have done this before, that might not necessarily be your specific gift. When there is a need, the Spirit is always ready and available to minister any gift that he has for people. And I think if you hunger after it, and if you long for it, I think it's, God wants to lay on you and of course that you are who you hang around too and I know that sounds sort of like sloppy uh, 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 grammar but not really it's who it's the anointing is tangible and whoever you are around uh, it will flow back on you Mm, so, good. yeah. Good. So yeah. tell us a little bit about your Arise Women's Conferences, because that's something that we've been able to participate in with our ministry um, for years now. We love it so much. What What's in store for you guys with Arise? What is it? Oh, well, thank God things are finally in store that now that Hawaii is going to open up October 15th. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my gosh. that We, we went through it, unfortunately, this year. Our... our um, theme was flourish and it's amazing how we have flourished even the spot the fact is that we've had no uh conferences at all hmm. and uh but but arise has really flourished and next april 29th we will have our first conference in kona hawaii and right now we're working on a 5k run walk uh arise with us with a uh, a friend of ours from mercy ministries that does that for mercy for past for nancy alcorn mm -hmm. and uh we're gonna do westmont arise santa barbara westmont college uh june 24th and we'll do Kauai, the lahui marriott on september 23rd and then we'll finish off 2021 in maui at the same hotel on november 4th wow. so it, it's going strong and um we're looking to uh, 
build or buy or create an Arise Maui Dream Center for 20 women that because we follow up with these women, we sponsor 168 diamond girls, we call them, because they're women that we want to see the word of God polish up. And they do. It's just amazing how, you know, we had one lady, Emma, who came in and uh, she was uh, so angry and she was in the domestic violence center in there in Kona, Hawaii. And we go in there before we start a meeting and um, we pray for the girls in there. And she was sitting there and she'd been thrown out of a car at 60 miles an hour by her, what I call insignificant other. And she was really angry. Of course, uh, who wouldn't be? And we laid hands on her and we didn't expect her to come to the conference. Of course, it's all free. We pamper them. We bless them. We, um, you know, put them up and have them go through. We have a sort of a diamond girl mother that just encourages them and gets them to the sessions and everything like that. She came out of that. We didn't expect to hear from her, but, you know, we just have to cast the care of this on the Lord, just like you have a church. And two years later, she came back dressed in a gray suit, looked like she was out of Forbes magazine. She'd gone over to the other side of the island. She'd gone away from the insignificant other. She had gotten a job. She looked up on a grassy knoll, and there was a group of people holding hands, praying. And it was a church. She went and broke the circle, started praying with them. God went to that church and God just cleaned the fish. I mean, just cleaned her right up, brought her who she was in Christ and showed her she's not a victim, she's a victor. And that's what we do with these women. So every year we sponsor 168 of them out of shelters, prisons, juvenile facilities, wherever we can get them mm -hmm. and bring them into these for two nights and three days. And God just turns them around with the word of God. Mm -hmm. It's not us, it's just the anointed word of God. And But we need all of you to come and help us. Right. So go to ariseconferences.com, and we'll have that registration up soon. I think uh, she's already got it up. I'm not sure where it's at, but I'm sure within the next 30 days we'll have it up. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be Kona, Santa Barbara, uh, Kauai, and Maui next year. So what would you say, what would you say to people who, you know, maybe during this pandemic and all of the riots and everything that's been happening, they're kind of getting a feeling and a sense from God, like, you know, I, I think I have something in my life, you know, I would love to do that and, and, and help to set something up to sponsor women out of domestic violence, or they're getting some kind of download from the Lord about how they can get involved and help change things. How would you encourage them? And what, what advice would you give them? We do have partners, and, and a lot of times you ask God, what is your own particular DNA? You know, you've got a different iris in your eye. You've got a different fingerprint. You've got a gifting. You've got an anointing, and you ask, ask God what that is. And um, we do have partnerships. Uh, and like this week, um, I've decided that what we're going to do with our Dream Center girls, just to encourage them a little girl a, a little bit, because we have our one lady that works it on Maui, she goes into the prisons and she brings ladies out and, and some of them do well, some of them go back, some of them come back. I'm going to start featuring them on my Facebook, giving them $100 every time they, you know, get a job, get their kids back, some monumental goal, something happens in their life, just to encourage them they can go on. They don't have to be a victim of their past, that they can press forth to the mark of the high calling of God in their life, but it takes all of us. It mm -hmm. takes all of us to encourage them. So we also have mentors. We have people, when we come to the meeting, we'll assign you to somebody that you can follow up on in the next six months, and you set the parameters of that. It's nothing hard and fast, but just somebody that you can encourage, somebody that you can bring along, because that can make the difference whether they make it or not. I had two ladies that, uh, uh, two sisters that we've been encouraging in uh, Kona this year, they live with five children and they and, and one of the ladies' husbands. The husband and the sister had to go into hospital, so there was only one breadwinner, and that was the one lady, and she was working at UPS at $12 an hour. <laughs> so that, you know, it, it was really a blessing to be able to send her a big chunk, and it helped her along, got, and, and she got favor with her landlord. They mm -hmm. uh, 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 put the uh, rent in half and uh, we were able to financially bless her and things like that because of partners through riseconferences.com. I like what you have to say there because sometimes people get this big vision. I'm like, I want to do this big, huge thing, but they don't even start by sowing a seed into their own ministry at their church or getting involved in some way. And everybody wants to do this big thing, but they don't even, they can't even stay faithful with something really small 
And I think that that's such an important point that there are small things that everybody can do like donating, like giving, like, you know, being a mentor for someone. And I think if you start there, then the Lord continues to reveal to you other things that he can use you for. Yeah. It's sort of like peeling an onion or, you know, a rose unfolding. It's layer by layer. Mm -hmm. And every time you give $5, $10, $50, $100, it just comes back to you on every wave. It's just amazing what God will do. Amen. Just well, like as we God. as we kind of wrap up, I have another question. Just one more question for you. You know, I was um, blessed to be able to be at your, let's just say your last birthday party. And that was a couple of years ago that you had a big milestone there. And I will say that you are as sharp as ever, um, you know, with the word of God and your ministry. How do you stay so energized and focused uh now moving into you know really a new decade of life well chrissy it's just like anything else the word of god's quick and powerful is a two-edged sword you got to get that thing in you i I just try to you know read every morning and then i journal and Mm -hmm. i write down uh what god's quickening to me and as i do that and of course i walk and i exercise and do as much as that as i can because that's really important and get a lot of fresh air and exercise Mm -hmm. Um, and I think also, you know, staying in fellowship, uh, it's really been hard because, uh, you know, there has been no fellowship, but we're excited because our church has opened up, uh, outdoors at least and, um, staying in tune. Um, I don't know, just, you know, praying and seeking the face of God, but, um, yeah. That's good. That's really good. And then hanging around younger people and being an influence to them. I think what we're starting out the conversation with, you know, ministering to your grandchildren and things like that, finding people that, uh, you know, you're speaking spirit, but you've got to give an outlet. You've you've got to give it out. It's Mm -hmm. not like that you can keep it to yourself. Yeah. So in using the word of God, it, it quickens back to you when you're ministering it to, to other people. And to me, that's the beauty of what discipleship is really all about, is that when you when you share what's on your heart, you're actually, I believe, doing that in faith. And whenever we operate in faith, our faith grows, our understanding of God grows, his his presence in our life, it, it magnifies. Oh, yeah. it does. I had a really funny, uh, if you have a minute, I have a really funny story about one of these grandchildren. I was out on the water. We were all went to the beach. We had a beach day last weekend. And the one uh, nine-year-old was asking questions, saying about how do we know that Jesus is really real? And so we get out there on our boogie boards and we're talking about uh, God and the protection of God. And what's the difference between Harry Potter and Jesus? <laughs> because I mean, that's what they're exposed to. So you've got to be able to, you know, explain how it, uh, Jesus is this, uh, God's snake swallowed Aaron's snake, swallowed up all the other snakes, right? Mm-hmm. God is always more powerful than anything that the enemy can do. And so we were sitting out there talking about protection of God and how God will protect you. Um, And we looked over to our left and there was a man with a fishing pole, which is kind of odd because we were all kids on boogie boards out there and usually nobody's fishing because you don't want to get a, you know, a hook on somebody's board or something like that. And so we kept on talking and then um, all of a sudden on the right hand side, we see the man with a stingray on the beach. He'd hooked onto a stingray and the thing was on the other side of us. I mean, that stingray, while we were talking about the protection of God, must have gone right underneath our feet. And wow. if you've ever been stung by a stingray, it is not pretty. It does not feel good. But uh, that was just the Lord showing uh, my little nine-year-old friend that God is your protection. He is your provider. Psalms 91. You, uh, you know, uh, you do dwell in the secret place of the Most High God under the shadow of the Almighty. He's there for you. So um, you keep talking about it. It'll manifest. That's good. That's really good. Well, Mary, thank you so much for joining us today on the Chrissy Miles Show. Um, and if you have any more questions, if you have questions or comments, and, and you can you know, message us in the comment in the description box. And we love to just answer questions about the Word of God, what He's done in our lives, uh, how He ministers to us you know, really every day. And he, He's so good and He's so faithful. And uh, we'd love to connect with you in that 
that way. And if you haven't done so yet, check out Mary's uh, website, ariseconferences.com, and you can get more information about an upcoming Arise Women's Conference, uh, how to get involved, how to attend, and how you can really just support helping women who are struggling, uh, and you can help see them get back on their feet through the Word of God. So thank you again, Mary, for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next time on the Christy Miles Show. All right. Blessings. Blessings. Thanks for watching the Chrissy Miles Show. I hope you enjoyed this very special episode with my good friend, Mary Hudson. Comment in the comments section if you'd like more videos like this. I would love to introduce you to some of my friends that have really encouraged me and inspired me to get more out of life. And if you haven't done so yet, subscribe to this channel and click the bell to get notified of more of my proven methods to get more out of life. Thanks for watching.